kulandireni kuri konse kumene muku tuonera matsulo wano ndine Brian Banda kulandirana program ina aso sabata ino ya Times Exclusive akuti patsira program we ndi Aaron Bopens wow i think kpish looks amazing in that role mm, the electric blue cuts it for me come on look at the tango and the pink mm-hmm. then the orange okay sweet line do you like what you see you can dream it and live it download your rainbow app today and begin the magic of transforming your home into a fabulous space rainbow paints peace of mind part of the deal Nwanga un programu hii ndi Dr. Thomas Mundhali mkulu wa National Planning Commission NPC di kulandireni uh, director general uh, Matsulo wana nzema kwa ngipra di kukumana pamene nkhani za 2063 zili nkama nkama nkutega wena kuti mpaka pano sama mvetsa kuti kuti mukamati national planning commission mukamati uh-huh. M- mw 2063 uh-huh. ndi chiani uh-huh. kuti bungweli chiani aha uh-huh. uh, zikon kwambiri brand mm. um for solabu na kwambiri uh, chiambirira uh, national planning commission ndi bungwe limene lina kazi kusidwa kuzela mu nyumba ya malamu uh, mchaka cha 2017 Choli ngachake cheni cheni chinali eh, nkhani ziwiri. Choli ambirira chinali choti ngati dzipo. Ah uh, tipange ma plan amene ata kale okhazikika oyanganira pa tsukulo kwambiri. Uh, komanso ndi ndi kumachi bwendo kuti masomphenya adziko. Ah uh, komanso ma plan oti titha kumakwanisa masomphenya ameneyo. Chachiwiri chole na kuti ma plan ajaka khazikisidwa bungweli ndizionesisa kuti pali kalondo londo wone na kuti kuti masomphenya cha kupandisidwa mm. kamena iya. Mm. Uh, ndi ndi nkhani za zikulu ziwiri zimene eh, eh, uh, udindo mene una pasidwa ku bungwe limene lili. Ndi zonja ndi lisa kuti eh, linakhazikisidwa pamene uh, ma political parties once. Uh, ata unikira kuti panali kumbuyo ku uh, ma plan amatha kuyambidwa ndi chipani. Mm. Uh, Chikabwera chipani china papeza kuti asintha yeah. baso zina. Ndi I think ata kala pansi ana uonekera mu nzeru zawo kuti ya tikukhala ngati mwapita ma step four of sogolo kena kumaza bwere la seven mm. ndeno china wakomera kuti tikhale ndi bungwe limene uh, lizithandiza kuti tikapanga plan uh, lizone sizo ma plan aja akulondolezeka uh, kuti panga bwere uh, chipani china chiti chonse chizikha kuti chilondola be ma plan amene alipo malingana ngati alipo komera amalawo mm. nde pana khazikisidwa titalo wa office pana khazikisidwa andondomeko ya masompinyadzi tinazungulira dziko lonse mukumbira brand time manager kuti muri time ziso mm-hmm. uh, tinali tukuzungulira covid data fika apo mm-hmm. uh, tinali tikwapeza anthu kuzera mawireless mm-hmm. makanema uh, ndi motero anthu anakhazikisa masompinya awo amalawo 2063 kuti anthu kuti uh, chaka chikoma kona cha 2063 amafunisa dziko la thuli lizakhale lolemera kwambiri komanso uh, lozi dalira paloka mm-hmm. machuma uh, ndeno mundondomeko zose tikupangazi eh tukone sisa kuti masomphenya a Malawi yo aza kwandilisidwa eh poona kuti izi ndi zondi kutali 2063 eh ngati dziko tinaganiza kuti ai tikhale ndi eh, ndotomeko ya mbiri ya saka 10 yeah the minute mati first 10 year implementation plan uh, cholinga chake ndi chonela kuti njofika kula tizidi apa ngono pangono mm. uh, ndi mu masomphenya oya uh, mu ndotomeko ya mbiri ya saka 10 muri nkhani zwi chiambirira tikuma tikamapita ku mala 2063 kodi tinga one sese kodi kama kona 2030 dziko ilili likhale kuti lili mwa amodzi mwa maiko otukuka pa dziko la kwansa meti mati low middle income mm. uh, komanso uh, tuna sese kuti ndo ndomeko mfundo za zitukuza dziko la kwansa za sustainable development goals tizikwandise za mbiri mwa izo yeah. chifuka panopa 
uh, Timatindi uh, Zaka so Malizira. Mm. Uh, 23 is a Kauta Maliza uh, ma Sustainable Development Goals. Ngati Zika unafiti za Kalibutitu Amozi ama iku Aziku Labansi. Amina za Kalagunyadi la kuti. Zambili mwa hizo tinasipa njilisa. Chifu mm. fundo zo tandi za chitu kucha kwa atunzu. Ndekani ya ikuli mene ilipo ya National Planning Commission kumaso maso mpenya aki. Ndi amene uo. Ndichifuwa jake mwona kuti eh, tima unesesa kuti ma plan uh, sama ngo kala pa Chipanish modes. Mm. I am ba, and I UDF, and MCP, and DPP, and PP, and then on say what is one of the testers just repeated here. Malinga has booked me a Malawi at Satangere Guti Ena as up Kasuri in the Guamba Sozao. Choling a jacket and the International Planning Commission to choose West Venice. My plan or must take a long road with the source of Pirabas of Paul. Mugan is a good decoz of Dubu Ganga de Zibo. Are you optimistic? I'm very, very optimistic. Zifuwa Zingapo. Yeah, yeah. Choya mba chute na kuti number one, panu panu tenima swa mpenya mene ali very clear. Tikuziwa kuti amalawi tikufuna jani. Chifuwa jambi ya mtuma ina kuziwa kuti kuti knowing the problems have the solution. Yeah. Tikuziwa kuma tikuna kufita ntikuma funa mene tinga tani nao kutipile kumene koko. Number two, ndichone achuti kwanta yu ya mba takalamo nga tiziko ndi bungwe the minute in a casino and Dila Moro. Kuti Mugajitama Planio, Mushi take a long rondo. Could go to Ziguenda, that says Ziguenda just to Pangi Sandijan. And the Pagalibanova, Posajo Batica, Dupanga release the report here to Yambilina, ya progress report, ya first ten year implementation plan. And the Tikapanga release, more than a minimum minute to Gendila, would end what. And the Chakajamawa, the Joti Tizaka and the National Development Conference. Pamenti na pili report chamu February ikubera ni kuti azisa malawi kuti tukuenda branch. Okay. Andi tapi mpa president, state president kuti azakali presiding over that event. Kuti azakali aku ni kila aku sokolela kalonda kalonda mene tukuenda motele komanso tukufuni sisi kuti mungile mene yoyote tukali kuti panga na hodi shada counter. Now the third point mene chama tukangi sisi kuti tukuona kuti tirindi chiyembekezo. Muga wone sisi branch. Uh, 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 Siri kutengi la kutichipa ni ishi, kapina ishi, ya mm. onsa, kumabu ilali mozi. Tati fatu kwa zile, inu timati tiza kupanga za kuti, inu uh, corruption is going to be done. Inu kaya zama, chita chiti onse, akukala ndi shimi. Chimene chocho, ndi chimene chita tipa ngise kuti, once we begin to hold each other accountable, the heads begin to roll. And when that happens, ali ye sama kala kuziwa kuti, ah, inedu, chito ya nkapina baki, eh, ndika chita masewe na, sezi enda. Mm. Number three, muka unaso uh, kwa president. Ali ye se, Alindi mbali yaki. As I'm saying, pa guronseri kuyambila kukomishoni, kaya kuparliamenti, kaya kuta. There's nobody who be perfect. Kuma the, the, the roles that they are playing so far, you can see kuti, there is a movement towards trying to do things differently. Mm. Mwona aswa president, munga hivu nankani ya corruption. Panopa, akwesi sa kwanga facilitate kuti, uh, anti-corruption bureau is pasiba mpamfu. It's not independent. Mm. Akali pa waka, asa sokoneze, asipanga zao. Aga bimpa kuti ya ituma le pere forty mazela ku director of public prosecutions alia facilitate ku parliamenti the central amuro muzipanga go straight noka. Yeah. Zatega agwasi resources ikuchepa tia ka budget katu ikuchepa kuma beti wone sasa kuti tindrama tochu ukirap tukupase pamozi ndi ma technical resources. I think it is easy in tizina zomwe eh, amati tizia mikina. Mm -hmm. And itika wona so church for uh, civil society engagement. If you look at how engaged the civil society is, it gives hope. We are beginning to hold each other more and more accountable. The next day, which is about social media, mm -hmm. and it forces the authorities to be more careful. And to me, but we can do better. One of the issues that I want to I think at commission, when he says, sir, she put the food in a church pool. We are lacking sense of urgency. Tikubanga basin to sorting at the Zibola Tuli, Liguenda Binobino. Yeah. 
nyumba yatu mtu kaka nyumba yako kamaona kuti eh nyumba iko yamba kupya sunga magadunge madzi mu maenda mhm kuba nekutamange mai kwanza twesa osewa kunika kuti muzochitika za kwakutamanga a Tanzania apa no middle income a Zambia ndao a Mozambique almost everybody is running ndechi kufunika kuti na face kuti yambe kutamanga now one of the things many to we say sanga da commission kuti tipange kuti na kutamanga ku ndeti panga bwanje number 1 ndi kuti una jabuti chambe kupanga kalondo londo mhm kodi ichi chiri pakati tipange engage bilateral kapena collectively kodi pamene pakuvuta ndi chani muna ndikani ya capacity mhm ngati la capacity who is responsible to build that capacity number 2 can we make sure kuti tipange more accountability pakali accountability systems is some harmful yeah uh, both as as we said kuti a parliament and the head of state are taking my strides ngati mino wao tie ndi tapase uh, more to one bit kuti nkhani ya accountability nayo pasugoro anthu azikhala kuchukuma ndithu ndizo funikira zimenezes nde mukandi for sandithu kuti mule ndi chembekezo ine ndi kuona kuti chembekezo chiri kuti as long as we are able to do the right things now tuona kuti pali ma exogenous shocks zinthu zoti pali chomwe tinga pange kwambiri cyclones zikhalapo pali bechi momunga chite chabwera chimenya nyumba igwesa pali bechi momunga chite kwa moti kwanje pali nkhani za covid ndi zija zinati sokonekera zichi but in Kanisa, we call on the Russia, we claim we can dismiss the chance. Dismiss all those exogenous shocks. As at this moment, we are not going to mind about the change. My sons, in Kanisa, we have farms. In Kanisa, we have done analysis of the National Planning Commission. We have done a lot of modes. We have molecules, masoya, nteza, nyemba. We are getting one billion from the markets. One billion US dollars, and that's not a small man. One growing season. If we do on mega farms, for my mega farms, I am a pangasu anka and am a miziaj. More about extension services and research, more about seed you in era. I will listen to mega farm, go to mega farm, which are you could export. They would you are inclusively growing together as a country. Now, the question is, where are we? Which means we need to begin to hold each other more accountable. If the president says within six months we need to have the mega farms, he has to draw. Mm. Somebody should really work hard at making sure mm. that those things happen. And that's where I think we as a nation need to be holding each other a lot more accountable. Say, no, no, no. This is one of the things. Second thing I'll give you as an example. We, uh, you know, have lots of minerals in this country. Yeah. And uh, some of the things would require us, for example, to just open up a few of the mining sites. Uh, what you need to sign uh, mining development agreements. These are simple things that just you go look at the law. What does the law say? Ngadata pika rule tiyo kwani namwa kuti above. Ngadata pange za kuti according to law mwapasi. But why has it taken us this long? There are some three uh, uh, mining development agreements. Aga irekera, ku Palombe, ku then we have ku Malingunde, I mean Malingunde, where we also have rare earth ku Palombe. So three sites that already are at very advanced stages of MDS mm. agreements. Okay. But why has it taken us so long to just sign off? One reason, which comes back to fear as a nation, we've got a problem as a people. Okay. Sometimes we force it on the authorities not to act. I can tell you, if the Minister of Finance signs today, uh, including the Minister of Mining, could know we are signing off with Kairikera, you'll be getting 5% royalties, which is in the law. Mm. Then you have civil society in the mining and whatever grouping that is. No, 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 to many country 20. Ah, we're losing out. We're demonstrating. We're going on the streets. Now, the authorities are growing cold feet. Mm. But yet, if those agreements, if we need to change the law, let's change. Let's encourage our, our law makers, change the law. Mm. But as of now, let us sign the MDS as they are and bring that forex. We will not be looking at this fuel crisis that we are looking at. Yeah. Easy. Look at tourism. Tourism is an issue of visa, for example. Our e-visa, if you go there, we've had so many meetings that we're supposed to be in Malawi. You tell our, our, our colleagues that are supposed to come here, apply your visa online. It's down. Mm. Now, okay, what do we do? Uh, are we allowed to come and, you know, Get it to the point of entry. No, 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 no. You can't. You have to do it online. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you call colleagues there and say, colleagues, can we 
you know, just write a letter. Uh, put it online there. Put it mukayesa, mukukaniga. Just come on the point of entry. It is mm-hmm. As we are sorting out our e-visa platform. That takes so long. Mm. So all I'm saying is, there are certain quick wins yeah. that we should not, uh, you know, have uh, exogenous shocks as scapegoats. Mm. Are we doing the right things? Now, yeah. we, yeah, though, there are people that would be saying, as a commission, do you think we still manage to get the low middle income economy at the pace we're going? And we're saying, look, why should we change the goalposts when we're not doing what we're supposed mm. to do? So simply, if as a nation we do these things and we hold each other more accountable, yeah. very, very, within a short time, yeah. we should be getting mm-hmm. it. If I get for so long, I'm going to get for so You have given a very classic example of visa. I'm going to get a visa by internet. I'm going to get a visa by internet. I'm going to get a visa by in baby mindset change. Mm. Mm. Do you agree with mm. him? Right. You see, you know, I strongly believe in this hotel. One of the reasons I'll tell you, Brian, is mindset change has got two elements to it. One is where people change on their own. Mm-hmm. because they see the importance of changing. And some of it, you may not change easily uh, because of the capacities. Your capacity, uh, you, you live in the past. Mm-hmm. I mean, you are that uh, past person. It's very hard for you to change because that's who you are. You've got this, uh, um, uh, given, the, given the context in the new, for example, uh, environment of technology, uh, for you to know what computers would do, would be able to couple, would do A, B, C, D. You can't. You just can't. You need to move out of that office and leave to somebody who can run the new era. Right? Mm. Now, there's also another element uh, where you're talking about mindset change. Mindset change, as I said, first is capacity issue. Sometimes you don't have the capacity, both technically, but also some of these institutions like the MDAs, a lot of them also are faced with capacity challenges. Mm-hmm. So you would be shocked, Brian, that some of the offices that would want to do work, but their internet is almost down all the time. Mm-hmm. You go to a minister, you ask a PS, can you send my message? He says, and it doesn't... And this of, is a it's, it's, tr- it's, it's true. A and day, yes, true. Sun and day not because Sun and, because you Sun and, I mean, you there's a problem. But indeed, the internet is a challenge in this office. You go and check on, 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 on his, you know, uh, computer, if you were to check it. Yes, yeah, and ready. Why? Because there's intermittent connections of the mm. internet. You go in some of the offices, I was not asking, the mafuna didn't be, umano is not the voter. Why? A document, you might not be pitted in cabinet, umano is not the Right? You go, you ask the local government, you guys, can you write a concept note? Uh, Tipange, you know, we now have a, a, a plan. A, a second city's plan. But his staffing, most of them have gone to the... He only has seven staff. His staff establishment is supposed to be 15. Mm. So there are things that you find that MDAs are failing, not because of their own uh, making, but because the capacities are not there. Mm. Now, that's a different aspect. Second aspect that you look at is uh, some people that just by, de- by default, they just have a mindset of, I don't care. Mm. Now, in that case, somebody has to put a stick. Yeah. That's where the leadership now, now has to take a stronger stance and say, you know what, if I'm going to give you a deadline and you don't, I'm sorry, you'd have to be excused. Mm. You know? Because we have to be sending strong signals. If it's an issue of capacity, then come up and say, in Langa, did the following A, B, C, D. So we're able to determine within your capacities what is it that you can be able to deliver. Mm. Uh, so that we as a tend to say, ah, Kumadi Nkulu, Sangate Kubanga deliver this much because capacity can do hotel, therefore we expect the following. So there are two things there, carrot and stick. Mm. If those of you that are doing well, if we think that the Ministry, for argument's sake, say, of, of transport or lands or agriculture is doing well, the heads there should be motivated. Mm. Give them the incentives that it will make them do more. But if you don't incentivize them, and they think the others are you know, getting their pay and benefits as usual as they are, their motivation to do better yeah. will not be there. Yeah. So, and yet, Brian, in the civil service, we've got these public regulations, everything else, 
all the the benefits and the carrots and stick are there but mm. not being applied mm. so we need to invoke those yeah. and begin to apply them if you look at the difference between Rwanda and Malawi no difference the only difference is that somebody holds somebody some people accountable that's right yeah so you find that you don't play nonsense in Rwanda Kagame is a nonsense guy you 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 come in there you, you are given contracts performance contracts they are assessed by independent bodies you are not doing it sorry we agreed three years you, you haven't been able to do it set aside we have so many other Rwandese here let's give another one a chance as so the same with here if we do it here I'm telling you we we'll begin to see things mm. different. so that carrot and stick now the last bit on the mindset change is we have to begin with our kids today from early child development primary school secondary schools and all the way up we have to make sure that our curriculums are teaching our children issues of ethics, hard work, hating handouts, corruption is not good, integrity, patriotism, all these things. Yeah. They should be growing up knowing, you know, these are what makes a nation. This is what will build ourselves. The future that we want will be built through these ethos. So, elders, carrot and stick. Children, curriculum. Mm. Let them grow up mm. and we'll get there. And I'm excited the midst of uh, uh, education and Malawi Institute of Education have already started on the curriculum reviews, which is quite exciting because once we incorporate those things, then we are growing a nation that 2063 will be fit for them. So Anzatwago, our friends in Rwanda, mm -hmm. have been able to achieve all what they have achieved because of what? Mostly accountability. Not, Performance not, not, not leadership? No, well, so it's a combination. Okay. It's a combination. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about leadership, this is leadership at all levels. Because oftentimes we look at just political leadership. If there is political leadership and there's a gap in between, yeah. nothing will happen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you need to make sure that there's a whole range of leadership. Everybody has got that sense of, this is my Rwanda, this is my Malawi. I, I want to... So I'll give you an example, for instance. If, if we... And that's why sometimes people are saying, look, if I'm a planner, and the, our role is to make sure that we plan for the nation and we give it so the Minister of Agriculture is not implementing. So, if we are not implementers, we are also with what we are doing. The problem is this is a chain. You do your part, but if the others don't do their part, then the whole issue is a waste of time. Mm. So, for example, you go in a, in a theater, you think that my plan is my sons. We go in a theater, want to give birth to a healthy baby. And we're looking at the, we're running on a genset. And one of the few are going to seeker. Mm. So we send a message uh, to our colleagues uh, in Nokia or wherever it is and say, hey guys, do we have enough fuel? Because we are worried the moment we seek it out, anytime we talk about the money. So what do you do? Ah, okay, ask our treasury uh, to, if we have money. We can easily, we have got fuel, but just, you know, treasury should sign with the drama and this The ST signs, but then somebody on the way uh, uh, says, no, I can't take this. Uh, thing to give to Nokia, but I will sell him a photo, a driver. Nangani mwa ikapo yanga kati. Nangani ngo pita Nokia mabasi, kupanda yujeni, ah, kujikalida. We should have holy anger to say, no, 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 you can't sit on that voucher. Mm. You know what that voucher means? Mwana wuyu yutiku mudigira guno kuyo, ata gufa any time. Mafuda motu kwa wanila masika. But often times, ti masia kuti, ah, izozo, so you ask me, what do you want to do? It's not to me, a voucher. And then it's the same. No, I should be able to get interested and say, where is the voucher? Yeah, in my party. If we all have that mentality as a nation, to begin to say, I'm going to go to the house. If you have a voucher, you can see the voucher. Move this thing. Everybody does work on it because we work as a team. Yeah. Not silos. We work as a team and making sure that we want to deliver a healthy baby. For us to do this, everybody has to do their part in the chain so that fuel are in good time. We, you know, something like that. One of the many questions in many years of Caribbean is why 2063? Good. Are we going to be there? Good question. That's another mindset change issue. Number one. Yeah. 2063, all we're saying is um, we got our safe. Uh, independence as uh, a self government in uh, 1963. Come 2063 will be 100 years of political independence. 
But our forefathers, when they were asking for independence, they didn't just want political independence, really. They wanted us to be able to have economic independence as well. Mm. That we have. That's why even Kamos we would emphasize the Funa Mukale Nyumba Yosa Donta, Mukale Ndizovala, Dishabudia Shogwani. Because to him, those basics. Now, years down the line, we still have people that are s sitting or living in Nyumba Zodonta. Actually, Nyumba Zamaudzu. Which, is, which should not even be something we should be proud of. Mm. Now, for us to meet economic independence, we're saying, okay, can we say, okay, 100 years down the line, our people should be able to say, ah, no, no, I think we've achieved economic independence. And we should be planning for the good of the future nations. So we, we calibrated and said, okay, uh, as, as an economic uh, uh, think tank, if we calibrate economic modeling, where would it make us rich an upper middle income economy. Mm. It was getting us to around 2063. I said, okay, then let's plan for that period. Coincidentally for us, which was beautiful as well, was that the uh, African agenda 2063, which is the continental blueprint, also is running up to that end. Mm. So I said, okay, can we then align? Because our, uh, our modeling is taking us that this is where it will take us to. Yeah. We may not be there, but our children, because we're building a nation, we're not building our we're building a nation of Malawi. We want to be counted amongst the nations come 2063. But we realized to say, okay, for us to get there, there's need for us to, in the interim, to have short, medium term kind of milestones. So we came up with a 10 year, first year, first 10 year implementation plan. Okay. To say between now and 2030, what is it that we can achieve so that within our lifetime, we're going to be able to tell the kids to say, look, these are the foundations we're setting for you. There will be another group that will do it from 2031 uh, uh, mm. to 40. They will also put more foundations to make sure that we get there. So it's not like we've left it. The vision is aspirations. Mm. But in terms of plans, we are planning 10 years. In terms of the catalytic interventions that we have to do to get there. And now that takes me to another important point, Brian. One of the challenges that we face as a nation is that we have failed to balance between the social and economic sectors. Mm. I can assure you water and sanitation, education, health, governance are very key. Matter of fact, those should be the end result of, you know, we should be looking at how do we make sure that our people have these. But unfortunately, they don't make money. They don't generate money, these ones. Mm. What generates money are the productive sectors. So mining, tourism, commercialized agriculture, economic infrastructure like energy, you know, proper transport systems, ICT. Mm -hmm. Now, as a nation, we should have been saying, okay, our money, most of it, should be going to these productive sectors. So that we generate enough money to be able, because this facilitates private sector growth. If private sector, whether it's an alliance with government on their own, have got the energy, have got the proper transport infrastructure, ICT, uh, you know, the mining sectors are being facilitated, it was, they will make money, that money will bring forex, will increase your fiscal space, at the same time you retire your debt. Yeah. It depends some of us, uh, Brian, but if you look at Capicilla, mm. 140 megawatts fell off because of cycle. We're not able to bring that back up because we don't have anywhere to get dollars to mm. bring it back. We have to ask, you know, to beg, ask the World Bank, can mm. you borrow us money to raise you so that 130 dollars, uh, uh, megawatts is back online? And World Bank tells you, no, okay, fine. Uh, but we can only give you this loan by this period. Mm. So uh, you might only be able to get this by December in terms of putting this back online. Actually, I'm, I'm told that the deadline might even be missed by December, yeah. right? Yeah. But if we had wealth of our own, like a, a buffer resource, like other countries do have, because they are, they are promoting their productive sectors more, mm. we could just have said, oh, my, Mr. Minister of Finance, can you draw, sorry, can you draw this amount from the buffer? put capital back online. As simple as that. Mm. But for us, it means we completely, we have to beg. That, why we shouldn't neglect the social sectors, because they're important. We have to remember that we need money. Even in your household, if you are sending your kids to St. Andrews, sending them to go to hospitals, but you don't have the sources of income mm. for that, sooner or later, they'll be withdrawn. Yeah, that's an idea. You know. So we need, as a nation, to focus a lot more. Our budgets, national budgets, facilitate the productive sectors. Mm -hmm. Within a short, as I told you, mega farms. Let's do the E-visas, e take off those visas. It doesn't save us anything. Mm -hmm. 
if you're competing with countries like Zambia, Kenya, Tanzania, who have got even more advanced tourism facilities, yeah. take off the visa so that you, you use that as a joker. Yeah. You say, come here. There are no visas here. No visas here. Mm. You know, so there are some simple things that we should be doing to generate the incomes that should be able to help us sustainably support the fuel that we want, the medicines that we want, and everything else, and sit back and relax. In any case, good economics makes good politics. In case you're just joining us, I'm joined by Dr. Thomas Muntari, the Director General for the Malawi National Planning Commission. We'll take a short break. We'll be back for second hour. Wow, I think Capish looks amazing on that door. Mm, the electric blue cuts it for me. Come on, look at the tango, candy pink, mm -hmm. bent orange, okay, sweet line. Do you like what you see? You can dream it and live it. Download your Rainbow app today and begin the magic of transforming your home into a fabulous space. Rainbow Paints. Peace of mind. Part of the deal. This is Times Exclusive, uh, airing on Times Network. I am joined by Dr. Thomas Muntari, Director General of the Malawi National Planning Commission. So, since you have been in office, are we making progress in as far as the 10-year plan that you're talking about? Mm -hmm. And also with a vision for 2063? Correct. No, so I just mentioned, Brian, that yeah. um, we are now reviewing the first, uh, you know, uh, the the first ten year implementation plan. Uh, end of this year, we'll be coming up with the. Uh, so we are in, in year number one, as we, we speak. We're done one year. One because year. Because we started 2021, 2022 okay. now. Okay. So we'll be moving to the second year. Okay. So um, that first uh, uh, annual progress report is just about to be released. But some of the things that uh, are coming out clear, which is exciting, is that there's already an initiation of a number of catalytic interventions that were set to be done uh, in the first year. Uh, actually, about 50% of them have already commenced, which is very exciting. Uh, we have that others that uh, have, uh, have been have derailed, uh, mm -hmm. over 8%. But, uh, uh, you know, what what is challenging, though, uh, so that the nation knows is that, and this takes me back to the point that I raised, mm -hmm. is that um, out of where we seem not to be making much progress, uh, the concern is that a lot of it, for example, is on industrialization. And yet, this is where, if we're going to talk more jobs, we're going to talk more economic growth, we're talking to, uh, are going to talk about reducing inequalities in incomes and so on, a lot of it will come because of industrialization. Uh, because the, um, the more you concentrate on agriculture uh, in its current form, uh, there's very little that you can achieve in terms of growth uh, from, the, from that particular area. Uh, and so again, uh, if you look at the sustainable development goals, uh, which is, you remember, our milestones are, are double. Mm -hmm. We have to graduate to a low middle income, but also meet most of the SDGs. When we assess the SDGs that are not making progress, which we are unlikely to meet, is one on no poverty. Uh, second is the one on reducing inequality. And the last one is on life on land. And that's about afforestation progress on stuff. Mm -hmm. And the, the SDGs that are on borderline, unfortunately, are the ones that would really help us to reduce inequalities and to take off the poverty. So for example, the one that deals with energy. Uh, the SDG that deals with the industrialization, uh, the one that deals with uh, um, um, uh, economic growth. Now, when you, when you combine all these uh, SDGs that are really key uh, in driving uh, us towards the two milestones, it just tells us the story that I was saying, we need to be paying a lot more attention to the productive sectors. Yeah. Because if you're not in the productive sectors, you're unlikely to industrialize, you're likely 
yeah, um, uh, you know, you need the energy for you to, to do that. So if you don't pay attention to energy and everything else, mining industrialization will not happen. So um, I think as a nation, we've got a role, especially with the, the resourcing of our national budgets. To always ask, our, ask ourselves, where is the hunch of our resources going? Mm. Are we going to have more returns with the money that we're putting in? Or uh, oftentimes the challenge is we have development partners with good intents, but who would want to be pushing you more into the social sectors? They will even ask you sometimes, uh, you know, we might have to pull out because you're not putting money in the health sector. That's right. But so you end up putting a lot of your money in the health mm -hmm. sector, mm -hmm. a lot of your money in education. Matter of fact, education is, takes the lion's share of our mm -hmm. national budget. Mm -hmm. By the way, the money that goes in education, even though it looks a lot, is just a drop in the ocean. The needs in the education sector are massive, Brian. Yeah. But we're not going to su sustain those ones. We'll only use borrowing and, the, uh, uh, and, and, and begging to support the education sector and the health sector if we don't create the wealth that we want. And so the key message is simple. Uh, let's focus on that. What the MIP one is telling us is that so far, you guys uh, are making progress in initiating the catalytic interventions, mm -hmm. but a lot of your resources are not going to the catalytic interventions that will make you the money that you need at the shortest time possible. So I think the bottom line is that one. On the social economic recovery plan, for instance, uh, we have um, so far, I think, some good progress on vaccinations. I'm saying good progress because we had started very slow. Yeah. Now we are having about 15% uh, of the population vaccinated. Mm. But 15% is far off from the 60% that we need That's right. to achieve health immunity. But we're excited that the Minister of Health uh, the minister and the, her team and the technical staff are working very hard in the sense that they've now gone into engaging the communities, the, the traditional leaders, and they want to take the COVID uh, even to the schools now, the COVID vaccinations. To me, that's the way to go because you need now to have targeted. Don't I expect them to come to you, mm. but now go to them. Yeah. And I think that's a, a very good step in the right direction. We have partners that are going that direction. And we have seen a number of infrastructure front roading of resources by partners because they appreciate that they have to be some kind of public works that are happening so that you know through that front roading you're also having some social protection programs including this aip currently uh, which is being re-engineered mm -hmm. and i think the authorities should be given a part that we're going in the right direction mm -hmm. yeah in the sense that it's now looked at as a package it's a social protection package yeah, say, i'm glad that you ha you have touched on a aip mm -hmm. Because the, there are different schools of thought right. when, as far as AIP is concerned. Right. Do you think we should continue? You see, the issue, uh, Brian, about uh, uh, AIP or the subsidies in any economy is about affordability. Can you afford it? Yeah. Whether we need or not, we do need it. But the question is, can you afford it? Yeah. Now, given the circumstances that we are in, we can't. So we have to be. Uh, a bit more, um, uh, you know, thinking outside the box in terms of how best can we handle the people that need AIP. So not everybody will need AIP. And I think it's good that you've seen, you know, the Minister of Agriculture and the, the leadership has realized that if you just focus on everybody getting AIP, we end up having some group that would still come up 3.8 million later, also asking for food, yet mm -hmm. you had given money for AIP. So you double suffer. You give the money for fertilizer, you also get money to buy food for the same people. Yeah. So they have said, look, uh, we should demarcate this. Others should be on public works, so they get cash. Others should be on cash transfers, straight cash transfers, mm -hmm. they get the money and they buy. Others that are productive and have got piece of land should now get the AIP. Mm -hmm. So over time, what they've done, which is what's exciting, the AIP is now going through clubs, through cooperatives. Yeah. Meaning, over time, you are building their capacities to be able to use the AIP to produce for commercial and productive purposes. Mm -hmm. So that over time, you then are going to reduce out and let them stand on their own. Because now as clubs, they can have uh, capacities to buy the fertilizer. So on as their we own. speak today, we yes. cannot afford AIP. Is no, that no. What, you're, what you're telling me? As we speak today, yes. in, in the current context, yes. it is very hard for us to sustain it. Okay. Sustaining it will be very hard. Okay. But the steps that the authorities are taking are in the right direction. And I think that has to be applauded. Now, you see, you cannot take off this all of a sudden to say, uh, today, no AIP. Because 
as I, as I told you, the issue is not about whether we should give it or not. It is about how we can, whether we can afford to sustain it. Mm. And what we are defining now is the form that it should take. Okay. And, 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 and the authorities have listened, and that's exciting, listened to the voices of experts to say, look, over time, can we get this out mm. and move this to cooperatives so that there's more productivity, productivity, use it for more commercialized purposes so that they can afford to buy the fertilizers on their own uh, moving forward. Mm. So I think it's the step. You, you also have to understand, uh, Brian, uh, that here's a political context. Yeah. Here's the people that came in office promising. Yeah. And therefore, uh, just dumping it off like that could be suicidal for yeah. them. Yeah. But we'll have to find a mechanism. On the political front. On the political front. Yeah. But as a nation, we also have to look at, do we have the resources for us to do that? So we've got to find a way of, how do we strike a balance that over time that this is phased out? Mm. And I think the listening should be given a, a, a thumbs up that they're saying, look, I think we can begin to look at this uh, in different aspects. All this integration of the social protection program and using the clubs and cooperatives is the way to go. Because eventually you're making this to be a productive asset that it's used. And over time, you don't even need that anymore mm -hmm. because the clubs will be able to have their own resources to sustain. So that's what I would say really on the, on the IP. We have uh, seen the National Planning Commission giving medals. We saw giving one to uh, the late Ngwazi, mm -hmm. uh, then Bingu. Yes. Uh, you moved on to President Chakwera, mm -hmm. uh, Joyce Banda. Mm -hmm. uh, w what is this? Good question. You see, when we launched as a nation yeah. the first 10-year implementation plan, and then the first year, just the first year, boom, COVID came. And then later on, immediately, we had the cyclones. Yeah. And then Russo, Ukraine war. Then we sat down and said, you know what? I think we need to accelerate implementation of the first 10 year implementation plan. We've got to begin to identify initiatives that can really push us forward. Now, first is we have to understand that um, uh, we have, you know, the commission in, in, in its nature is supposed to promote initiatives that transcend political regimes. And so we looked at, okay, what are the things that we can identify from all the leaders that have been there, mm -hmm. that we can say, if we do more of A, B, C, D, I think we'll be making great strides as a nation. Okay. So we looked at what Kamazu did. If you look at the kind of infrastructure network, yeah. whether it's health, whether it's education, whether it's tarmac roads, whatever, it was something that was meant to last. And we said, look, I think he set the foundations of the kind of Malawi that we should be looking at in long term, intergenerational mm -hmm. development projects. Now, anybody that we've identified in their brand has got their short phones. Yeah. They are not angels. Mm -hmm. But they have done certain things that if we do more of as a nation, we can go very far. So we're able to identify that. And what we did also, apart from those that are already gone, like Kamus Banda and Bingo, we looked at those that are still alive and said, what are the things that we can pick that we can tell them, you know what, this, we are so appreciative if you did this. And can you be able to be a voice to your supporters that we, we need to do more of this if mm. we're going to attend the Malawi Day So essentially, we're encouraging them to do more and picking on the good things that can propel us as a nation. We didn't stop there. By the way, uh, Brian, facts are stubborn. Whether we like it or not, if somebody, for example, Bakiri Mulozi, Dr. Bakiri Mulozi put in place the uh, human rights bodies that we see today, he facilitated that as a leader. Yeah, but you, did, you haven't given him. Uh, no, not yet, because he's outside the country. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. you know, he's going to give, give us a new date. Okay. You, you cannot take away from him. Th that's him. Yeah. If you are looking at the, um, at the current president, the efforts that he's making uh, in terms of uh, the corruption fight, whether we like it or not, he can do better like another individual. Yeah. But you can take away from him. Mm -hmm. He's making those efforts. If you look at the vice president, the mindset change issues, you know, issues where he's propagating mindset change all the time, you cannot take away that from him. Mm -hmm. Facts are stubborn. Yeah. You know, you look at President Mutariga, the issues that he did around the, um, uh, the, the community colleges or whether it is about, you know, even taking, taking the fact that um, um, one can give the space to say, look, I can allow voices, uh, you know, Malawians to voice themselves out 
and then eventually step off, I, I think that's also statesmanship. So there are so, so many things that we should be uh, celebrating our people. You talk about uh, uh, Dr. Joyce Banda. If you're talking, for example, safe motherhood, that you're saying to them, yeah. I mean, you cannot take away, you, you talk about Joyce Banda, both internationally, uh, globally, is a, a leader that is renowned on women empowerment, safe motherhood, uh, businesses, and, and, and what was happening during the economy during her time. Whether you like it or not, you can't. So the point we're making is, let's celebrate those things that can propel us forward. Mm -hmm. By the way, we went a step further. We didn't just look at the leaders, our political leaders per se. We even went to look at the individuals that are making strides that are taking us there in the agriculture space, in the environmental space, in the human capital space. So if you look, they're all over. Mm -hmm. But people sometimes don't pick what it is. You mm -hmm. see, Brian, one of the things that we have as a challenge in this country, we focus a lot more on negativity. Yeah. We bring the negatives and make them mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But we forget to focus more on the... Negativity will not take us anywhere. Mm -hmm. You mention them, so what? Positives have two effects. You encourage the person, they will yeah. do more. Yeah. At the same time, the nation benefits. Mm -hmm. So let's do more of these positive things. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And at the same time, this is a unifying factor, Brian. If you're able to recognize people from all across, across divides, mm -hmm. you are saying, look, we together, yeah. collectively, can yeah. do this. Yeah. You don't have to wait for, we all have to be leaders with our titles. Mm. Then let's move this country mm. forward. So the first 10 years, you are focusing on what? The first two things, as I said. Yeah. We want to graduate this country into a low-middle-income economy by 2030. Second, Is that possible? Very possible. With the way we are doing our everyday business? Very possible. Uh, good question you are saying. Yeah. If in the way, No. It's not possible if we continue doing the way we're doing yeah. it. There, I agree with you, Brian. Yes. That is why we need that mindset change and carrot and stick. Okay. Because without that carrot and stick, somebody can just sit in the office and I don't care. Mm. After all, I get my benefits. Somebody has to go to crack the whip yeah. and say, sorry, I think the vision that we have and you, it thinks you are a misfit mm. in this context. So can you step aside? Mm. Let's give a chance to someone who can really deliver what we want. Yeah. To me, if we do the right things, Brian, this country has got all it takes. It's got the people, it's got the resources, it's got everything that we can... You know, most of the times you bring people here, they laugh at us. You guys, are you saying you're not... A, uh, you're saying low middle income by 2030. Why, why 2030? That's mm. too far. That's too far. Just as I told you, if you're just talking of... Just have three minutes... Min by the way, in, in, in 2010, uh, 11, when we had started with Kaira Kaira, mining, just one mining site, yeah. moved from 1% to 10% mm. contribution. Mm. Now imagine we have three, so it's only 30% contribution. Yeah, that's right. Now bring in mega farms on there. They will bring one billion in one growing season. Mm. You're talking of just legumes. You haven't talked of bananas, macadamia, mangoes. You have, you've left those out. Yeah. Now bring all those together. It's, it's money. You have not even added value. Yeah. We're just talking raw. Yeah. Bring the tourism, say two visas, we're making a projection. So just making visas. Just see from Europe, uh, the, the numbers that we had, over 500,000 Europe, 500,000 from Europe site alone in a year. I know how, how much that is, multiply that by 40,000 US dollars each. That is if you're talking of tourists, what about meetings? Mm -hmm. Because meetings, as I said, we've lost meetings to Zambia mm -hmm. and other countries and Rwanda yeah. because they'll get visa on arrival. But for us, we can even say, not even on arrival, no visa. All we need is we have to make sure we track who you are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, free visa, just free visa. That brand will bring people here in the process. And, and why are we not doing that? Good question. Why are we not doing that? But I just mentioned to you that there's need to crack the whip. Yeah. Unfortunately, time is, is of essence. <laughs> What are your final thoughts for tonight? Brian, I think for me, I have all the optimism that this country has got all its takes. Yeah, but someone commented, you are the right guy for this job, but probably you're in the wrong country. <laughs> do, you sometimes, do you sometimes feel like you're in the wrong country? No, no, not at all. Not, not at, at all. all? Not at all, Brian. I, 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 I'm a Malawian and, you know, some of us... Because you have brilliant ideas. Yes. You see this country transforming. 
very much so. But the way we are doing our everyday business, I don't think we'll get there. I think it's a collective irresponsibility. The moment all of us begin to realize that we only have this one country and we have to do our part, it is not about him taking credit, her taking credit, that together we can do it and have that critical mass of people. You know, some of us had to leave our, our jobs in diaspora. Yes. Come back here because we believe strongly that we, we've got what it takes as a nation and we can do our part and leave the legacy that one day people can say, why was Malawi taking so long? And I think if we can have... Do you, do you get frustrated? You know, we, fortunately at, for me, at the pace we are taking as a country? Of course, this, the lack of sense of urgency. Sometimes so we, we, we have that lack of... Lack of sense of urgency. To me, that's where the, the rubber hits the tarmac. Okay. If we can have that sense of urgency at all levels, yeah. political, you know, technical level, we all have to take that the vision that is set up there is what everybody runs off with at all levels. We engage the private sector in meaningful ways, not just engaging for the sake of to tick the box. Mm. And then we move together jointly. Brian, this country will be a shining star in this region mm. within a short period mm. of time. And I have no doubt at all. No doubt at all. It takes seven, uh, you know, sometimes a month just to sign a letter. More than that. More than that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Brand sense of urgency, even sometimes to make just a decision. Yeah. It takes, and you, you tend to wonder, what, what is it? You know, so if, if we don't do a carrot and whip, mm. then you, you'll be sitting on like that. Mm. But uh, these exogenous shocks should not really tear us apart. Yeah. We, if we do the right thing, you're optimistic. I'm 100 plus 1 percent optimistic. We have to leave it there tonight. Uh, quite interesting hearing you talk, uh, Dr. Montali. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks, man. Well, on that note, we conclude this week's edition of Times Exclusive. I was, I was joined by Dr. Thomas Montali, Director General for the National Planning Commission. From all of us here in the administrative capital, Lilongwe, wishing you the very best of the evening and goodbye.